We've all heard of the really lengthy and inefficient drug discovery process today. And I bet you've seen this picture about a million times over. But the reason we're talking about it so much is because this is a really big problem. I mean, think about it. In the first two phases, we're spending three to six years just trying to find suitable candidates for a drug that may not even pan out later down the line. Now, because of this big problem, there are people working on it today using classical machine learning algorithms. But the problem is these algorithms only take some sort of parameters and characteristics that they want the drug to have and spew out potential molecules a few days later. But the problem still lies in simulating molecules and avoiding the lab altogether. Now, there are a couple different challenges to simulating molecules. One is that there's a lot of quantum physics involved, and classical computers aren't good enough to simulate it. And two, simulating molecules involves finding the lowest possible eigenvalue of a given matrix representing some molecule. Now, for those of you that don't know, an eigenvector and an eigenvalue are two really important concepts in linear algebra. So an eigenvector is essentially a really special vector associated with some matrix so that when the matrix is applied to it, it only gets scaled up by a certain factor. It doesn't change the span of the line it was already on. And so that eigenvector is that uh, scalar that it gets scaled up by. Now this eigenvector or eigenvalue is really important because we can actually represent molecules as a Hamiltonian matrix, which is essentially a matrix that represents all the potential and kinetic energies inside of a molecule. And finding the lowest possible eigenvalue of that matrix gives us the ground state energy of the molecule, which is really important for simulating it. So this is where quantum computing comes in, because not only are quantum computers really good at simulating quantum physics, they're also really good at finding the lowest possible eigenvalue of some matrix. And they do this using the variational quantum eigensolver, or VQE for short. Now, a VQE is a hybrid classical quantum machine learning algorithm that approximates the ground state energy of some molecule. And it does this using the variational principle. Now, this principle is the entire reason the algorithm works. It essentially states that the expectation value of some Hamiltonian will always be greater than or equal to the ground state energy of that molecule. You can sort of think of it as a well. You know, a well has an upper bound. There's a limit to how much water can be in there based on the height of the well. And so the lowest possible energy state of that molecule is sort of our upper bound. All we have to do is keep minimizing our expectation value, and we'll only get closer and closer to it, never below. So there are four different parts to the variational quantum eigensolver. First, we have to create an ansatz. After that, we have to map the molecular Hamiltonian into a qubit Hamiltonian. After that, we have to measure all of our values and calculate the expectation value. And finally, all we have to do is optimize our parameters and reiterate through the loop a bunch of times. So using these four steps, I was able to find the ground state energy of lithium hydride. Here you can see that all the values converge onto the ground state's energy and the associated bond length that it actually did uh, perfectly compared to the exact eigensolver. So first what I had to do is I had to create an ansatz. An ansatz is essentially a bunch of different values that we want to test creating our expectation value with. And you can kind of think of it as a robotic arm with a pencil at the end of it. If you only have one arm, you can only draw so many uh, values. But if you add another arm, you cover a lot more surface area and you can test out more values. So that's essentially what I tried to do. I created a very detailed ansatz, but I also made it shallow enough so that um, there's not too many parameters to optimize. Um, and with this ansatz, we also have to change it with each iteration, because if we use the same one, we'll get the same answers. So we use this, uh, or we do this using the variational form, which is essentially a linear transformation on some initial quantum state. In my, uh, in my case, I use the Hartree-Fox state as my reference state, but you can also use the vacuum state or state zero to do this. After that, I had to map the molecular Hamiltonian into a qubit Hamiltonian. Essentially what I'm doing here is I'm taking that matrix that represents all the mo molecules' energies and I'm mapping it so the quantum computer can sort of mimic the molecule and perform calculations with it as if we were actually working with the molecule itself. And then after I had to measure all the values and calculate the expectation value. So in this uh, part, I'm just taking that Hamiltonian I mapped and using the trial state that we created from our ansatz. After that, all that's left to do is to optimize the function and uh, try and minimize our expectation value with each iteration and optimizing that parameter theta in our ansatz. And like I said, after that, I was able to find the ground state energy of lithium hydride. 
although this is a smaller molecule and it's easily computable by a classical computer, just think of the implications of this for the future when we can start simulating even bigger molecules. We can take this drug discovery process and cut those three to six years to maybe even one year, maybe a month, maybe a week, or maybe even a couple days. Thanks. <laughs>